Nitty sand blows through Caps's deli, New Year's Day. Hotter than the mustard on my pastrami and rye. Hot as it was burning cold outside. How hot, I asked. You have no idea. A waiter just back from Afghanistan said, snatching a quick break from a celebration, watch thick salami and roast beef sandwiches, plates piled with potato salad, thick with sour pickles, huge knishes rapidly vanishing from New York's taste bud memories, pass across the counter, crossing generations, line barely moving and thirsting for Dr. Brown's cream soda to wash down what hadn't yet been eaten. I inched my way closer to what the man ahead of me was telling the waiter who nodded, explosives going off between his roast beef and sauerkraut, orders for him and a friend. Yes, it's to go, three more days. Words drawing lines and sand around them, Sand I now stood in could taste. Sand hotter than I ever imagined. The one who just come back and the other en route to Iraq. The one so nervous, jittery. The other so calm. I have a job to do, he said, without looking at me. Then I'll come home. Spoken with such surety, I didn't know what to say. And forcing my way in where I didn't belong, said, my late partner was in Vietnam, flinging a grenade into the silence I didn't hear go off till too late. Wow. Thank you. And he didn't die in Vietnam, he died of lung cancer later, but I didn't realize how those words would be taken until afterwards. There was another poem I wanted to read. If I could find it. I had it all marked up nicely. Um, I'm not sure where it is now. If I can't find it, I'll leave something else. <laughs> no, I had, I had it all. It's some jazz poem I thought would fit in very well here. Um, but I'm not sure. Okay. Well, let me, um, I really was more organized than this. All right, I'll just read another one. There was a long poem I wanted to read about jazz. This is blues song, and I can find this one. Blues song. Must have cost plenty for one man to take this subway ride, startled by a buddy from another life slouching in downtown fringed leather, duds across the aisle, hard even with two kids tugging his shoulder, every minute whining, is this the stop to forget how it once was, urges older than they in those ready-to-go eyes, saw the bagged signature of permission, taste memory did the rest. Words trampled in dirty noise, didn't hurt up beat jazz, the other blew without a horn, blew the whole ride, improvising on the sound, just long enough to hand that man's boy a single bill when their stop came, give him that spoken look kids know from home. <laughs> All right, sneaking across the border. He never spoke of what it was like those three years in Amsterdam waiting to get to America, and I never asked. I heard about it from her, not him. He and I lived in separate countries. There was no crossing over, not then. Day after day, I read about those thousands of migrant children, many 17 and younger, and I hear my mother's voice from before I was ready to listen, only 17 when his father forced him to join a group of youths fleeing Russian pogroms. In an album she left me are the photos of the family he'd never see again. Using the migrant story, I sneak across the border among the children coming through Mexico, Central America, some drowning or getting shot. 
I see that Russian boy standing with others who made it here, forced to explain why, what he'll be asking himself his whole life. Thank you.